I'm Arlene Krantz. I'm the founder of Amazing Women in Action. I interview women from around the world who tell their stories, and you will learn how these amazing women created a life of meaning, happiness, and abundance. Today, I'm thrilled to have Sue Busen. Sue Busen is an expert in electro acupuncture. Now, Sue, can you please tell us what that is? Absolutely. <laughs> Electroacupuncture is a technique where I can measure the meridian system in either people or animals, and I can look at what things throw your body out of balance. So I can look at food sensitivities, I can look at environmental sensitivities, and see what might be causing symptoms for you in your diet or environment. So sometimes you're saying that we have something that's not right in our body. And we don't know what it is. It could be you just don't feel well, or it could be a mood change. It could be something, and you know inside something's off. And you work with the people that you work with in doing this particular modality, which is electroacupuncture. Right, right. I help them figure out what it is that's in their diet or environment that's causing them health issues. And how, what does that entail? Do they work with you on Skype? Do they work with you in person? Well, I do different things. One of the techniques that we'll probably get into is the tapping, which is more emotional. And I do that either in person, in groups, privately, or over Skype or over the phone even. The electroacupuncture, I can do either in person or I can do it by a hair sample. So for instance, all of the animals that I test, I do by hair sample because I don't bring animals into my house. Um, and people that are not local can just send me hair samples to do that testing. Wow. And you do this with animals? That has my interest, being yes. a dog lover. Yes, absolutely. I do a lot of animals. And what, what is it you find when you work with mm -hmm. an animal? Um, well, you know, a lot of times there's ingredients in the foods that they're eating that are causing them um, symptoms. I just did one this morning for a dog, a six-year-old German Shepherd, who was having all of his hair fall out. And I found that he had an imbalance in the thyroid, and he was sensitive to many of the ingredients in his food, such as canola oil, um, corn products, uh, wheat, um, codfish, and whitefish. And they had been feeding him fish prior to this problem beginning. So, you know, I can just kind of look through the history, the health problems, the challenges, the treatment that they've tried, and look to see what what's showing up bad while I do the testing. Wow, that's pretty amazing. I. And, and just to let everyone know, at the end of this interview, there will be a way that you can contact Sue if you want her to help you with, with a problem that, you want, that she can hopefully find what's going on in your body. Now, when you were growing up, what were you thinking of that you wanted to be when you were a little girl? Well, you know, at one point I wanted to be an artist. That was uh, kind of my dream when I was little. <clears throat> I loved being creative. Um, and I loved helping people. I, I had kind of a um, special gift of intuition, and I didn't really realize it at the time, but other people didn't have it. I didn't realize uh. it. So I sort of felt like an outsider um, because I just expected everyone had this, you know. And when I was realizing that they didn't, I felt a little bit awkward with that. Um, but I knew it was a special gift, and I didn't know how to use it. So it was a little difficult at that point in time. Did your family know that you had this gift? No. No, really nobody knew. Nobody knew. So you kept it to yourself? Mm-hmm. I did. And Whenever you... I brought it up to someone, even if I said, oh, well, you know, you know what's going to happen or something, they'd be like, what? What are you talking about? So it was, it was, it was kind of scary to me because I wasn't sure what it was um, or why I had it. But later in life, I figured it out. So... So that's good. And, and I'll bet, Sue, that there are a lot of women that are watching this that also have a gift, and they can relate to you when you're talking about that. Because sometimes you feel if you say something like that, people say, what, is she crazy? What, what's wrong with this kid? Yes, exactly. So when you were growing up, did you have dreams? What were your dreams when, you know, to be an artist? But was there something larger than that? You know, I really didn't know what I wanted. I, when I was in high school, I had a biology teacher that I just admired so much, and she really inspired me to go into science, and um, so I did that. So I became an uh, environmental biologist, wow. and I struggled with the fear of public speaking, and I'll probably get into this <laughs> later, but I had a really severe fear of public speaking. 
So I did become a biologist. I became a research scientist, and I was uh, working on some high-level projects working for the U.S. government. Um, and I loved it. I loved being a researcher. I loved trying to figure things out. Um, and then later it all made sense as to how it tied into my health issues and everything and why I ended up where I'm at today. That's amazing. An environmental biologist. That, that's pretty amazing. And I think the environment is what we're all looking at these days. So you were like doing this years ago. Yes. Were, a there, long time ago. were there a lot of women in the field when you were doing it? You know, surprisingly, there were quite a few. Ah. There really were. A lot of my classes, I'd be the only female in the class. So it, it was kind of interesting. And how did that feel for you? Because a lot of women are like, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. There's too many men. I'm going to feel, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be good enough to match up to them. How did that, how was that for you? I actually loved it. I loved, I've always loved being around men. And I never was like a real, like frilly girl who liked to dress up. In fact, I, I hated dressing up when, when I was a kid. Like if my mom would dress us up for Easter with our little gloves and our bonnets, it's like I couldn't wait to get them, get them off, you know. Um, so I was never like a real um, frilly type of girl. Um, and I was perfectly comfortable in a pair of, you know, hiking boots and jeans. So I fit right in, I guess, with, with the guys. <laughs> That's very cool. For me, it's all about the lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kind of learning makeup now. So. <laughs> well, you look great today. And also, you had, you had some health issues that turned you into wanting to do this kind of work. I did. I actually got into corporate research and doing work with some drug companies when I was with the government and then getting into companies with household products and personal care products. Um, so I had a lot of experience with the chemistry of different products and how things affect other organisms. Um, but in 1992 I was diagnosed with lupus ah. and then later I was diagnosed with liver tumors. And at the time I had just had my first son and I was really Scared initially, but I was very defensive and I didn't want to accept the diagnosis. And I realized that if I didn't accept it, it wouldn't become part of me. I wouldn't take it on. And I did that. And today, some many years later, um, I have no sign of lupus. Um, the liver tumors, which were progressively getting worse, I was having more tumors, more cysts or lesions, eventually completely disappeared in a very short period of time doing some of the natural things that I'm doing. And I was really drawn to those because, you know, having that mentality of being a research scientist, I just started researching everything that I could find that could help me and found some really neat, awesome um, natural methods that I started using. And that's how I learned the electroacupuncture and how I got into some of the energy modalities that I'm doing because they completely turned everything around in a matter of weeks. So... I was really, really intrigued by that. And then I started, you know, practicing some of the techniques on my own family and friends and some clients and um, eventually just turned that into a business. Oh, nice. So this is a good example of you having an illness, finding out what's out there that you could do to help yourself and mm -hmm. taking that information and turning around and helping other people. Exactly. So that's a good, that's actually a good model to follow because there's so many women have, have so many experiences in life and they don't realize how many other women have had their same experience. And I think that that's why I want women to tell their stories so that other women can hear somebody that's had, you know, a problem and was able to get past it. And not only that, but help other people as well. Well, thank you. And, you know, I, I love that you said that. And I think it's so important, and especially for health challenges, for women to explore other options, not to necessarily accept a diagnosis that they're given. And I also work um, as a medical assistant, and I see so many people who come in and they're just resigned to the fact, well, it's just part of getting older, or, oh, I have this, and now I'll get this, and then I have to go into medicine for this, and then that will cause this. And they're just accepting all these things and not really thinking outside the box and figuring, well, how can I solve this problem? They're just learning to manage it and live with it. But we don't necessarily have to do that. You know, we can stand up and find a better way. And it's interesting you say that because you can have a problem, go to see your doctor, but meanwhile do your research and find other alternatives and then walk in the office with your piece of paper and say, by the way, have you ever heard of this? Have you ever tried this? I'd like to do this and not go the regular route. 
Exactly. So I think that's that's a good thing that you did that research. Of course, today, I don't know if you had the research that we have today on the internet. You can find everything, whatever yeah. you want, somebody has an answer to out there. So that helps a lot. And you now you have four sons? I have three. Three. I knew it was three or four. I couldn't remember. Three uh -huh. sons. And what do they think about the work you're doing? They absolutely love it. They really do. They were pretty much raised on a lot of the techniques that I've done. They, um, they were sort of my own little lab, if you will. Um, <laughs> one of my sons had migraines from the time he was in about first grade. And I figured out doing the electroacupuncture that his sensitivity was to corn syrup. And I was being so careful testing everything before he ate it. What I didn't know was at school, his teacher was giving them treats in the classroom ah. that had corn syrup. And his problem was actually corn syrup, but it caused severe migraines. And he had them for about a year before I finally figured out because I didn't realize that he was getting these, these special treats in class that were causing him the, the headaches. But they, um, they've all grown up doing tapping. They've grown up to be really well-adjusted, outgoing kids, very successful. Um, one recently graduated from college, and the other two are currently in college. So they're doing great, and I attribute a lot of that to some of the tools that they grew up with. Excellent. And also, you are an author of many books. Yes. And now, what is your latest book that you just did? The latest book is Tap Into Balance, and it is a guide for using my Get Set Tapping approach um, to release negative emotions. and do you, limiting a, do you have one there in front of you? I have one behind me I can grab. Oh, let's see it. Okay, that would be this one here. Oh, excellent. I love the cover. It's beautiful. Thank you. And I have books for uh, children and for teens, um, all age groups. Oh, good. So when you... So when people go to your website with the information we're going to give them, they'll be able to see all the different books that you have. And yes. that, so did, you, did you find writing is an easy thing to do? No, I didn't. <laughs> I, I didn't really like writing. It was interesting, though, when I was in um, college, I was um, like told by one of my composition teachers, oh, you're really good at writing. And I never knew that. I never felt I was never had any desire to write a book at all and when I got into this tapping technique I, I loved it I was so intrigued by it and I was looking for a book um, that explained how to do it or or gave pointers for children because I had three small children at the time and I couldn't find one I kept looking and I couldn't find one and then eventually one day I used an affirmation I was I was testing out a law of attraction affirmation type thing uh -huh. And I thought, well, maybe it's up to me to do this book. So I wrote out an affirmation that said, I'm happy and grateful now that I have su successfully written and published a tapping book for children that reaches everyone who needs it around the world. And literally within a month, I had the book written and I was blown away because I really never expected to be an author. And now, you know, some, whatever it's been, eight years later, I've got, I'm working on my ninth book now. So, so that's very inspirational to me that there was something missing and that you had created what you were looking for. Yes. So think about that for those of you that are watching this, what are you looking for that you're not finding that you can create? And, and I'm sure many women are doing this. Many people out there are creating what they are not finding and know that there's a need for it. Now let's go to, back to your speaking. You and millions of people are scared to death to be a speaker. And I know that, and you're, you speak beautifully. Are you on the stage now speaking? I am, and it really surprises me. When I was in college, well, actually, I found this fear when I was in high school. I had to read a poem in front of the class, and I was shaking. My paper was shaking. My knees were shaking. I thought I was going to pass out, um, and I didn't know where the fear came from, and I still don't know where it came from, but I did have this fear, and in college, I dropped every class that required a presentation. Oh, Literally, wow. there were some classes I was really excited about taking. Go to the first day of class, and the teacher would explain the syllabus and the itinerary and say, okay, well, 20% of your grade is based on this presentation. I would go right to the office and drop it. I, oh, I was that terrified of speaking. And um, as I was learning a bunch of energy-related modalities, a friend of mine, um, Jim Walters, invited me to um, do some training with him in EFT which is emotional freedom techniques. Right. So I did the training with him, and he said, you know, imagine that, you know, you have, um, he asked me which fear I had, it was public speaking. So he said, imagine you're in front of a group, 
and how much fear this brings up. And I'm like, oh, it's unbelievable. We literally tapped for about five minutes and the fear was completely gone. I couldn't even imagine getting nervous in front of a group of people, which really blew me away and intrigued me at the same time. I wanted to know more. I wanted to teach everyone. And that was when I started looking for the children's book and then eventually wrote it. And when I wrote the children's book, I was invited to speak at an energy healing conference in Utah and I accepted the invitation without question and while I was on the plane on the way to Utah to do this talk for 300 people I thought what am I doing I can't believe I'm I'm going to speak on stage and I mean I was fine I was a little jittery when I started and I tapped out in the hall before I came out on stage and I was fine and um, actually I produced produced a DVD out of out of the talk Oh wow! <laughs> but really just it was amazing to me to find the technique to be that simple, that fast, um, and that effective. So, so it's e my fear away, and I have no fear now of speaking publicly. So EFT is actually type tapping. Yes. Yes. So because originally it was uh, people knew it as uh, uh, emotional freedom techniques, which is, which this guy years ago came up with this modality of how to do this, and now everybody knows that it's tapping. So yes. if anybody hears it, they'll know it's the same thing. Yes, it was developed by Gary Craig in the 1990s. And then I've added a couple of steps and tweaked it a little bit, and I've spoken with Gary and have agreed to change the name. So mine is called Get Set Tapping, which is Global Emotional Tapping Scripts and Energy Therapies, because I add a couple of extra steps, and I use scripts. And traditional EFT does not endorse the use of scripts. Wow, that's exciting. So you are in action all the time. I'm always in action. <laughs> <laughs> so now what's in the future for you? Oh, I'm seeing a lot more live presentations, um, a lot more speaking engagements, that sort of thing. Just kind of getting my word out on a bigger scale. Um, because really, as a single mom, I've had, um, when my children were younger, I really wasn't able to get out there. But I knew I was called to do the books. I knew I was called to get this work out there. So I was writing books, writing books, writing books, but never went out and and publicized them. A lot of people didn't even know I wrote books. So um, anyway, now my kids are all in school. They're all doing well. They're on their own. And it's time for me to get out and spread spread the word. So now you can start really spreading your wings and get out there. Yes. So who was your who was your inspiration, your biggest inspiration? Um, I would say throughout my life, it's always been my family. As a child, it was my parents and my brother and sister. Um, my family was in a business, a construction business, but it was always, um, you know, just a lot of work, a lot of business. And um, I saw that work ethic and that drive and that, you know, staying on task all the time. And I have not honestly been real good at that. I'm, I'm probably a, really distracted. Um, I, I like to call it the shiny object, the shiny object <laughs> syndrome. Anything I see, I go off on a tangent and do something else. So I have a hard time completing things. Um, but I think over the last, you know, 10 or 15 years, I would say my boys have been my biggest. Ah, uh, nice. They've just been, you know, such a joy to watch them grow. And they've just really inspired me to do the work that I'm here to do. So excellent. Mm -hmm. So what makes you happy? Oh, you know, helping people really makes me happiest. That's really, that's really what it is for me, figuring things out. I still have that inner research scientist. So if I can figure something out and find a solution for someone, I love doing that. That's excellent, excellent. Well, I have to say this was a great interview with you. And I love that, you, your, your, how your mind thinks. And just to let everybody know, which I didn't say in the beginning, I had Sue do some tapping on me. Because I had an issue that I needed to get past. And it was, it was amazing. She just got right into it, picked up on everything. I, was, I, I, I would throw out a word and she would start tapping on that particular word. And the thing that blew me away was that you said, your color of your face is changing. You're getting color in your face. I'm like, wow, this stuff is pretty amazing. So if it worked for me, it can work for anybody out there. Oh, and tapping, well, thank you. Yeah, it was really great, and, I, and in fact, I actually saved the recording, so when this issue comes up, I'm going to play that and start doing my own tapping. So thank you so much for this interview, and I look forward to your next book, because I know there's another book in the works. There is. <laughs>
And what is that going to be about? Can you share it? The next one is Tap Into Hope, and it is helping children through their grief journey using my tapping Oh, technique. that's so important. Wow. I can't wait. To, I can't wait till it comes out because children go through so much with grief and, and family, but just around themselves. It's so important. So thank you, my dear. It's been a great interview. And for everybody who's watching this, I ha uh, you, you can follow Sue at her website. And if you have an issue and you need some testing done to find out what's going on, Sue is a person to go to. So thank you, Sue.